The biggest event of Bitcoin is happening this week and I've decided to get in. Today I'm going to tell you why I've got in, how I've got in and how much risk I'm actually going to take. I've been following Bitcoin for a long time, probably since about 2008, but I've never had the balls to actually get in. But now Bitcoin is on its last leg and I've started to understand investing a little bit. I've decided to get involved. Do not worry, this is not going to become a Bitcoin channel and there's no way I'm going to be day trading Bitcoin. But I do feel like there's a little bit of an opportunity and I want to test the water a bit. Bitcoin is the most popular of the cryptocurrencies. If you're new to cryptocurrencies, cryptocurrencies are a type of money that have been designed to act in the same way as regular money, like say the pound or the dollar. If a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin is accepted at a shop, you can pay for goods and services with Bitcoin. The way a cryptocurrency differs to say a normal currency is a thing called decentralization. Normal currency, like the pound or the dollar, is controlled through a central bank, like the Bank of England. These centralized banks can create new money out of thin air whenever they like. So if, say, a virus takes over the world and shuts down all of the economies, a central bank can just print more money and give it to companies that might be going bankrupt. Any of that sounding familiar? And that's how our monetary system works right now. When companies like airlines and banks are too big to fail, a government comes in and just bails them out, even though they should probably have put some resilience in to save themselves. And that's what the Bitcoin creators were pissed off at. So they created their own currencies that didn't rely on central banks, that spread a little bit of fairness about the world. So cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin aren't owned by anyone, and they're run by a ridiculously complicated and unbreakable algorithm that governments can't mess with. With Bitcoin, there's also a limited amount of currency in circulation. So banks and governments can't go out and make new Bitcoin whenever an airline needs to get bailed out again. It puts a lot more pressure on businesses like banks and airlines to save a little bit of their own money for their own resilience. It's designed to bring in a bit more fairness to the economy to stop big businesses ruling where they probably don't deserve to. It's true capitalism. At present, there's only two ways to obtain Bitcoin. You can trade it for goods and services or you can mine it. Mining is a pretty flippant term for using computer processing power to encrypt more Bitcoin. The Bitcoin encryption process is so powerful that it takes years from multiple powerful computers to make up one Bitcoin. And this week an event occurred called the halving. The halving of Bitcoin is an original event brought in by the original programmers to make it twice as hard to make a Bitcoin. It's designed to slow down the rate of production so the Bitcoin can get spread around a bit. So when there's less Bitcoin going around, it makes the stock more rare, which sends the stock price up. This idea, coupled with all the interest that a halving event brings to Bitcoin, has made me kind of decide that I should get involved. I've got my reasons for getting involved in Bitcoin, but they might not be the same as you think. As much as people love Bitcoin, and it's the most popular of the currencies, it's not likely to be the one that wins in the end. It's probably no secret that governments and lobbyists don't enjoy Bitcoin, but millennials tend to love cryptocurrency, particularly the ones that feel under the foot of inflation, which has been caused by years of government intervention. So it's worth noting right now, for Bitcoin to become relevant in our society, there needs to be considerable political reform, or at least the big corporations and the big governments need to have a good control over it. So if it's got such a small chance of working, why are people into it? Well, it might happen. Once the final generation of investors that has benefited from inflation are gone, we'll be left with a lot of younger voters who will want to make change. And a lot of people are predicting that cryptocurrency is the way forward. But that's way too far ahead for me. This week I've decided to go into Bitcoin as a little bit of a dip of the toe into crypto. My own little bit of research has led me to the opinion that Bitcoin could be doing quite well in about 18 months. History suggests that a Bitcoin halving event generally is the start of a big bull run that lasts about a year. So my aim is to get in on that with a little bit of money just to see if I'm right. I'm thinking of it as a learning exercise, just as a marker to maybe predict what the next big crypto might do. I've decided to use Coinbase as my platform for getting into Bitcoin, but there's plenty out there. If you wanted to get into Coinbase, there's a link in the description below to sign up. Now there's an argument that right now it's a bad time to invest in Bitcoin. Right now it's at a squeeze point and there could be a big bull run coming or there could be a big crash coming. And my answer when you don't know where a market is going is the cost average. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm only going to put in about $100 in total. 
but I'm gonna spread out my investment over the next couple of weeks just to make sure I know where the market's going. I gotta say the Coinbase app isn't brilliant. It is nowhere near as good as trading 212. You have to deposit by bank transfer, which is fucking ridiculous. And it doesn't give you a very good sense of how well your Bitcoin's doing. It's also worth noting that cryptocurrency is not legal tender. So it is not recognized by the FCA or the FSCS. So Coinbase is not regulated. It's also not insured by the FSCS. So you could lose all your money if Coinbase disappears. That's just another risk on top of going into Bitcoin, which is already very volatile. Coinbase says it has its own insurance and that only 2% of the funds are kept online, but I wouldn't count on that. When your money goes in, it goes in as British pound. And then what you do is you go to your Bitcoin, you click trade, and then you can simply buy your fraction of Bitcoin through the app. So I can click five pound, preview buy, and buy now. And there I've successfully bought a little bit of Bitcoin. So far my Bitcoin hasn't moved at all. I don't expect it to move much. I also don't expect to make a lot of money off this at all. This is simply an experiment for me just to see where it's going. So that's me done with Bitcoin today. You won't probably hear about Bitcoin again from me for about a year. If you're interested in buying any Bitcoin, I use the app called Coinbase. There's a link in the description below if you wanted to sign up. When you deposit $100 into the account, we both get an extra $10 of Bitcoin. The next video, I'll be back to normal. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and invest.